Have you ever wondered how anti-epileptic drugs work or why they are crucial in the treatment of epilepsy? These are compelling questions that not only medical professionals but also anyone interested in the intricate workings of the human brain might ponder. Epilepsy is a complex neurological disorder marked by abnormal brain activity leading to seizures or periods of unusual behavior, sensations, and sometimes loss of awareness. The role of anti-epileptic drugs becomes crucial here as they help manage this abnormal brain activity, making life significantly easier for those living with epilepsy. But as with any medication, they are not one size fits all. The type of drug used depends largely on the type of seizures a person experiences. That's where the classification of epileptic seizures comes into play. To understand these drugs, we first need to know about the types of epileptic seizures. Epileptic seizures aren't all the same. They're classified into various types based on their characteristics. What do we mean by this? Well, let's dive right into it. Broadly speaking, epileptic seizures are classified into two types, focal and generalized seizures. But what sets these two apart? Focal seizures, also known as partial seizures, originate in just one part of the brain. They are further divided into two categories, simple focal seizures where consciousness is maintained and complex focal seizures where consciousness is impaired or lost. On the other hand, generalized seizures involve both sides of the brain simultaneously right from the onset. These are not confined to one specific area, they're like a storm that engulfs the whole brain. But the classification doesn't end there. Generalized seizures themselves are divided into several subtypes. And these subtypes are where things get really interesting. First off, we have tonic-clonic seizures, previously known as grand mal seizures. These are the ones you may typically envision when you think of a seizure. They're characterized by a sudden loss of consciousness, body stiffening, the tonic phase, followed by jerking movements, the clonic phase. Then there are absent seizures, formerly known as petit mal seizures. These are often subtle and may go unnoticed. They're characterized by brief lapses in consciousness, where the person might seem to be staring into space or daydreaming. We also have myoclonic seizures, which involve sudden, brief, jerk-like movements of a muscle or group of muscles. These seizures are often brief but can occur in clusters. Atonic seizures, also known as drop attacks, are characterized by a sudden loss of muscle tone, causing the person to fall or drop their head involuntarily. Lastly, we have tonic seizures, which involve sudden stiffness or tension in the muscles, particularly those in the back, arms, and legs. Each of these seizure types presents its own unique challenges in terms of detection, diagnosis, and treatment. But don't worry, the world of medicine has an array of anti-epileptic drugs at its disposal. Now that we understand the types of seizures, let's delve into the world of anti-epileptic drugs. Scene script. Think of grand mal seizures as the most severe form of epilepsy. The drugs used to treat them have to be potent. Let's dive into the world of anti-epileptic drugs, specifically those for grand mal seizures. There are several classes of these drugs, each with a different mode of action. We'll explore one prototype drug from each class, explaining their workings in simple, non-technical language. First up, we have the barbiturates, with phenobarbital as our prototype. This drug works by enhancing the activity of a neurotransmitter called GABA in the brain. GABA is like the brain's brake pedal. It slows things down. By boosting GABA's activity, phenobarbital helps calm the excessive electrical activity that causes grand mal seizures. Next on the list are the benzodiazepines, with diazepam as our representative. Much like phenobarbital, diazepam also enhances the activity of GABA, but it does so in a slightly different way binding to a different part of the GABA receptor. This subtle difference can make diazepam more effective for some people. Then we have sodium channel blockers, with carbamazepine as our prototype. This drug blocks sodium channels on nerve cells, preventing the rapid, repetitive firing of electrical signals that can trigger a seizure. It's like a roadblock on the highway of nerve signals, slowing down traffic to a manageable level. Lastly, we have calcium channel blockers, with ethosuximidae as our example. This drug blocks certain types of calcium channels, reducing the abnormal electrical activity in the brain. Calcium channels play a critical role in how nerve cells fire, so blocking them can be a powerful way to prevent seizures. So, there you have it. Four classes of drugs, 
each with a unique way of tackling the electrical storm that is a grand mal seizure. Each of these drugs has its own strengths and weaknesses, and what works best will depend on the individual's specific condition and overall health. Quite fascinating, isn't it? But what about the less severe forms of epilepsy? Petit mal seizures, while less severe, can be just as disruptive. The drugs used here need precision. To manage petit mal seizures, we primarily use two classes of drugs, ethosuximide and benzodiazepines. Let's break down how these two work. First, we have ethosuximide, a prototype drug in its class. It's fascinating how ethosuximide works. It reduces the frequency of seizures by inhibiting low-threshold calcium channels in your brain's thalamic neurons. These channels are responsible for generating rhythmic burst firing, which, when disrupted, often leads to petit mal seizures. By inhibiting these channels, ethosuximide prevents the erratic firing, helping to control the seizures. Next, let's move on to benzodiazepines, with a focus on clonazepam as our prototype drug. Clonazepam is a bit different from ethosuximide. It enhances the effect of the neurotransmitter gamma-aminobutyric acid, GABA, which inhibits the activity of nerve cells in the brain. In other words, it slows down the brain's activity. And when you slow down that overactive brain activity, you reduce the likelihood of a seizure. It's important to note that these drugs don't cure petit mal seizures. They manage the symptoms, helping individuals to live normal, productive lives. Also, like all medications, these drugs can have side effects. Ethosuximide might cause nausea, dizziness, or loss of appetite. Clonazepam, on the other hand, could lead to drowsiness or coordination problems. However, these side effects are usually manageable and often decrease over time as the body becomes accustomed to the drug. In conclusion, while both ethosuximide and clonazepam work differently, they share a common goal to manage and reduce the frequency of petit mal seizures. By understanding how these drugs work, we can better appreciate their roles and the positive impact they have on the lives of individuals experiencing petit mal seizures. So, we've covered a lot, haven't we? Let's do a quick recap. We've journeyed through the world of epileptic seizures and the drugs that manage them. Let's take a moment now to recap what we've learned and tie up any loose ends. We began by exploring the classification of epileptic seizures. We discovered that they're primarily divided into two types, grand mal and petit mal seizures. Grand mal seizures, also known as generalized tonic-clonic seizures, are characterized by a loss of consciousness and violent muscle contractions. Petit mal seizures, on the other hand, are less dramatic, often presenting as brief periods of unconsciousness or absence. Then we delved into the pharmacology of anti-epileptic drugs, starting with those used to manage grand mal seizures. We learned about the prototype drug, phenytoin, which works by slowing down the influx of sodium ions in the neurons, thus stabilizing their electrical activity and preventing seizure onset. Next, we shifted our focus to petit mal seizures and the prototype drug ethosuximide. We discussed how ethosuximide works by inhibiting T-type calcium channels in the thalamic neurons, reducing the rhythmical firing that leads to absence seizures. Throughout this journey, we've seen how intricate and nuanced the treatment of epilepsy can be. The right medication for one person may not work for another, underscoring the importance of personalized medicine in epilepsy management. In conclusion, remember that epilepsy is not a one-size-fits-all condition. Each seizure type requires a different treatment approach, and each individual may respond differently to the same drug. The world of anti-epileptic drugs is vast and complex, but with a solid understanding of the basics, you're well on your way to navigating it with confidence. Remember, every seizure is unique, and so is every treatment. Subscribe for more because you won't find me later. Thank you for joining us on this fascinating journey through anti-epileptic drugs. It's not every day that you get to delve into the intricacies of seizure classifications and the pharmacology of such significant medications. Remember, every like, every share, every comment fuels the creation of more content like this. We're all about spreading knowledge, so don't keep this to yourself. Share this video with someone who you think might appreciate it. And if you haven't already, do consider subscribing. We've got a whole lot more where this came from. From deep dives into medical topics to overviews of groundbreaking treatments, there's always something new to learn. Knowledge is power, and in the medical field, 
it can be a lifeline. So don't miss out on the opportunity to stay informed and educated. Stay curious, keep learning, and we'll see you in the next video.